Hi y'all. Today I'll be talking about the albums that came out in January 2023. I will be ranking them from worst to best. What's the best album that came out in January? I don't know. Plenty of albums came out in January, right? I didn't listen to all of them. That's unhealthy. But I've listened to a considerable amount of albums. So I'll just be ranking them from worst to best, you know? And see what happens. So let's get into the video. Gloria by Sammy Smith. This is the worst album I listened to this January. I just didn't really like what they're up to at the moment, you know? I feel like they've changed their music style to something that is just not very inventive or original or interesting, really. And it feels like such a drop-off, you know? From songs like Too Good At Good Vibes, Too Good At Good Vibes, sure. From songs like Too Good At Good Vibes to whatever they're working on with this formulaic type of pop music is just not original, it's not fun. So yeah, it just felt very bland and I really didn't connect with the record at all. Rush by Maneskin. This could be a biased opinion, really, because I'm really trying not to be, but I never really understood the hype around Maneskin, really. I feel like they're painfully mediocre, in my opinion, and very one-dimensional, not very inventive, and they've really always been like that. Uh, I, every song I've heard from them feels like something I've heard of like 30 times. This is meant to feel like energetic and playful and bombastic, which I guess it is in production. But, you know, it's, it's, it's done in such an expected form, an expected way that I just, it didn't really feel that exciting. So, yeah. Five Easy Hot Dogs by Mac DeMarco. This next album can be surprising for some people because I, I really like Mac DeMarco. I think he's a great musician, but you know, I had some high expectations for this record and I shouldn't have because this is potentially just an instrumental record. I don't have a problem with instrumentals. Actually, plenty of instrumental albums made it to this list and very high up as well. But you know, the first time I listened to this record was pretty cool. And you might think this is calming and peaceful, whatever, which it is, but after listening to it for a while, you know, more than twice or three times, it just feels like mediocre and lacks a lot of originality, really, for the most part. I love Mac DeMarco, I think he's a great artist, and I love his style, but I really couldn't connect with this record. Cacti by Millie Nomades. I don't know if it's Cacti or Cacti, probably Cacti. You know, now we jump to the section where the albums are actually, you know, good enough or pretty good. And the first one that made it here is Cacti by Billy No Mates. It's just pretty fun. It's a pretty fun album to listen to. It's pretty energetic and exciting for the most part. And its production value is very high. The use of synthesizers, it's very cool. It feels polished, but also dirty and DIY as well. So yeah, it's self-aware. It's full of identity, it's vulnerable, and yeah, it's just a fun, good enough album. Now we go to Honey by Samia. I was waiting for this record to come out for a while. I really loved Samia's last album, The Baby. I feel like lyrically it was beautiful and I had pretty high expectations for this one as well. So I don't think this was as good as The Baby, really, but it's definitely up there. It's more appreciative and lyrically heavy, you know, the production can be soft and nuanced, but it can have some really playful and bombastic moments as well. This album reminds me a lot to the latest project by uh, Charlie Hickey. You know, I feel like they fit in the same genre and style. I actually think they're friends, right? I feel like Samia and, well, I don't know her name, but her and Charlie Hickey are like close friends. I feel like they've worked on, or have been like, concerts together and everything, so I wouldn't be surprised if Charlie Hickey and Samia worked on this record. Now we go to Time's Arrow by Lady Tron. I think I like this album more than most people did, in my opinion. You know, some people have said that this album is for people that would buy anything that Lady Tron makes, and yeah, I guess that's true. It's not far apart from their previous projects, right? I think it's, it's in the same wavelength and style and production, whatever, is not new. I, I can totally agree with that, but it's still a very fun record. And you can even make that same argument for bands like The 1975 that are more like a brand, really. So they have like the same style across all their albums and it's very stale 
is really not that inventive. But they're still a fun band to listen to. I feel like that's what Ladytron is. And sometimes what you just want in an album is for it to be fun. And that's what this album is. Carvings by Johnny Hable. I'm a huge fan of folk music. Um, so it's no surprise this is up there, really. I feel like it's very sweet and existential with like some beautiful musical guitar progressions. I really don't have much to say about this one. It's just a very cozy and warm and welcoming record. And really that's like all you need in a folk album is to feel cozy and warm. 12 by Richie Sakamoto. The latest LP from the Japanese composer Richie Sakamoto was written and recorded in Tokyo while he was recovering from cancer treatment. It's very carefully crafted, it's very minimal and very appreciative. You know, as I've said before, it's very personal. You know, the, the subject matter is very heavy there. And for an instrumental record, I feel like it's able to make you feel some really heavy emotions. You know, its value and meaning is very deep, it's very heavy. I listen to this album a lot really and i feel like it helps you in its entirety while you walk around the park i've even used this album to read books i'm not a huge fan of reading books while you listen to music i can't concentrate that much but this one though it really really helped and yeah it's just a very special record complete mountain almanac by complete mountain almanac this is a pretty great record it has 12 songs each song kind of like is titled after every single month in the year so yeah it's very inventive and full of emotion despite being also very quiet and soft in its production somehow i like this one more than 12 by sakamoto you know maybe it's for pure taste and opinion i feel like the instrumentals in this world are more derivative from folk music and maybe that's why i found this more interesting to listen at and that's why this is just feels more comforting, maybe, that something like 12 by Sakamoto. Living Human Treasure by Italian 90. For a debut album, this is honestly pretty impressive. They have a lot of potential to truly make something awesome. They're definitely following the footsteps of bands like Idols. Definitely, you know, the production, the lyrics, their style is very similar. And as a post-punk band, I really hope that they can rise above all the clutter in the genre and truly make something special and inventive. So yeah, I can't wait to see what they work on in the future because for a debut album, this is like honestly the best of the best albums that came out in this January. Small Town Stardust by King Tough. This one has so many layers in production. The production is just very carefully planned with like some very dirty rock progressions at times, but also some other very uplifting lovely and sweet harmonies too so yeah it can be like two different sides of the spectrum in terms of production this record so it's very consistent and that makes it really good it's very fun you don't get tired of it and you know this is just very close to being one of the best albums of this month now we jump to the top three albums in january starting with gg's recovery by the murder capital this one is so close to being perfect you know the instrumentals are heavy and industrial, the lyrics rip you apart. It has that like alternative rock identity. There's a song called The Stars Will Leave Their Stage. That song will convince you this album is like one of the best albums that came out in January. It's very special, it's very cool, it's very unique. It has this combination between bands like Interpol to also bands like Black Country, New Road, it's just very cool, very inventive, very new, and you should totally listen to it. In my top two goes Furling by Meg Bayer. This is my second best album of January. I made a review of this album not so long ago, so you can check that out on my channel. But I just fell in love with this record, really. I feel like what Meg Bayer is able to produce with a simple guitar is just crazy to think about. The chord progressions of the guitar are very inventive, very new, like in every single song you're listening to a different guitar in a different vibe. It's just very cool, very different, very interesting. It's just carefully made, you know, it's very thought through and you just can't get tired of this record. It's really, really beautiful. And the best album that came out in January is Prize by Rosie Plain. In my opinion, Prize is just for real, the best album that came out in January. It's because it can be very exciting and very playful in production, but it can also be very nuanced 
in Appreciative as well. You know, this album has like a couple of incredible songs that can truly compete on being like the best songs of the year, in my opinion. It's just very fun, electric, it's very unique, very unique, very special, and there's really nothing better than something refreshing. That's really all you need. And that's the video, basically. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a like, leave a comment with your favorite albums of January, I don't know. So yeah, have a good day and I hope we can keep in touch. Goodbye. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka bra?